Hi, I'm Daniel Mullen, and you're watching Purebred Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. G'day guys, and welcome to the Purebred Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. We're here in the studio today to preview a huge game this weekend against Melbourne Victory at Cooper Stadium on Saturday night. It's a massive week with the return of Marco Kurz, our former coach. I'm your host, Ellis Gellios. I'm joined in the studio by Rob Greenwood from The Advertiser, um, football journalist as well as covering other sports as well. Uh, Rob, uh, just tell us a little bit about your background first. Um, you've sort of uh, been on the scene for a while now, but uh, in case there's a few fans that uh, might want to know a bit more about your professional background, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I um, studied uh, journalism at, at university, at UniSA, and uh, came out of that three-year course, and a uh, long time ago now, thinking back. Um, and uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to land a cadetship as I were back then at the Advertiser. Beautiful. Um, going back uh, about 12 or so years, probably a bit more actually, about 14, 15 years. Um, so I did that for a couple of years, took some time off, did some traveling, um, worked at a paper out at Gawler called The Bunyip for a couple of years, sort of okay. cutting my teeth in general news with little bits and pieces of sport and uh, ended up, yeah, just about a decade ago now back um, at News Corp uh, with the Messenger Community News. So again, was sort of general news there, um, ended up becoming sports editor there for a few years. Um, and then sort of uh, went full circle back to the, the Tizer again. Uh, I think that's coming up to about three or four years ago now as a, as a sports reporter there. And as you say, mainly sort of covering uh, covering football, but doing a fair a fair sort of uh, spread of other sports along the way as well. So that's probably the main uh, main sort of path to, to where we are now. Uh, it's great, mate. You've definitely done your apprenticeship, so uh, <laughs> it's good to see you in the spotlight now. Um, so you've been a writer for News Corp and the advertiser covering Adelaide United for some time. Uh, tell us how that's been, particularly evolving 24-hour football news media cycle. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, as you, you're spot on. It is a 24-7 thing, uh, which is good. Probably keeps us all in jobs. Yeah. Um, but no, look, it's uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I think obviously the Adelaide United A League team is probably the the, the main focus, especially mm -hmm. during the season. Um, but you know, there's just so much going on. Um, w League season started up, so we obviously cover cover that quite a bit, mainly from an Adelaide United perspective. Obviously, the local competitions are off season now, but um, you know, come early in the new year. Uh, they'll be in pre-season mode in the NPL and, and state leagues, uh, even the, the WNPL, the local women's competition. So we cover that quite heavily as well. Mm -hmm. um, so look, there's, there's always always something happening, which is great. Um, and you know, the other aspect is, I guess, which we have in football, which you know, other sports like AFL don't have, is our South Australian players that are applying their trade overseas. Totally. Which, which we're always keeping an eye on as well. So obviously we've got you know, guys like Craig Goodwin who are in the Middle East now. Um, you know, guys right across the UK, uh, Ben Garuccio, lots of... Um, Matthew Lecky. Yeah, Bill, absolutely. So guys that are either South Australian or guys that have come through Adelaide United, mm -hmm. we can kind of claim as our own. Yeah. Um, so that's great as well. So you know, those guys are always doing things. Um, so that's another thing to keep an eye on. So look, you, you nailed it at the top. It is a 24-7 thing um, operation. Which is great, and uh, yeah, it gives us plenty to write about, and hopefully, the people sort of plenty to, to read about as well. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so, before we jump into the preview, uh, you're a football fan as much as you are a reporter. Uh, inform our readers about any teams you support um, that aren't Adelaide United or any other football interests you have outside of uh, the Cooper Stadium press box. Yeah, so um, so I'm a, a massive Liverpool supporter. Um, I like to hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which I think we'll probably divide the, uh, the the viewership a little bit. But obviously in Adelaide and in Australia, we've got a huge uh, huge supporter base. Yeah, exactly. so, yeah, so I just grew up with that. I was the youngest of three brothers, and I, I think uh, it was never a conscious decision to support the, the Reds or the, the Merseyside Reds, uh, which is basically told you support that team in red, otherwise you, you're probably getting it from the older brothers. So. Wow. Um, so yeah, I'm old enough to just have, just remember sort of the, the end of like the, the glory era in mm. the late eighties. Um, remember the uh, 89, 90 time. Well, I'm luckier than some of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, but I think, you know, having sort of heard my brothers talk about the great Liverpool teams and winning trophies, I thought, oh, I took it for granted probably that this was, you know, yeah. going to be something I get used to every year. And, uh, you know, 30, kind of the 30 years later, we're still waiting. Um, but fingers crossed, things are sort of heading in the right direction now and this could be the year. So, um, so yeah, so certainly Liverpool, a massive passion. Also, um, the Socceroos, um, 
I've been to three World Cups um, supporting the Socceroos. So I was lucky enough to be in Germany in 2006 and travel around and, and see kind of the golden generation uh, do its thing. Did you see all three games? Yeah, yeah, all, all four. All four. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, 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 it was yeah. At, at all four. Yeah, yeah. two games in Kaiserslautern. Wow. So rode the sort of the highs and lows of that, but. That was, uh, yeah, someone who, who'd grown up, you know, going through the heartache of not even qualifying for World Cups to, to finally be there and then for us to perform so well on that world stage was, um, was pretty incredible. So, yeah, so I went to that and was also in, um, wasn't in South Africa, but was in Brazil in 2014 mm -hmm. um, and then was in Russia last year. Um, Traveling around and, and watching that as well. So obviously, result-wise, those last two World Cups not as good. Yeah. Um, but still, you know, for anyone that's remotely interested in football, just the, the ultimate, you know, three or four weeks of your life, um, you know, traveling around and watching football and having probably a couple of beers along the way as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a you know, massive, massive party of, of football. So um, yeah, that's probably my sort of main passions. I, I played the sport up until probably four or five years ago. Okay. Um, played it sort of most of my life and old age and bad knees and whatever and work catch up with you. But um, but yeah, certainly, you know, football's sort of been my biggest passion and, and still is to this day. Oh, you've got some euphoric experience <laughs> under your belt then, Rob. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Well, we're going to jump straight into the preview. So, uh, Rob, the theme of our preview really focuses on the, re on the recent bit of uh, spitefulness that has been added uh, to the growth of the original rivalry. Uh, this weekend's clash between Adelaide United and Melbourne Victory, of course. Uh, Victory, our bitter, bitter rivals going back uh, as long as the A-League has existed. Um, long gone are the Musket and Kuzmina sideline tussles. Now, this is a game that's all about the fact that uh, Adelaide's most recent manager, Marco Kurz, who uh, you would have had plenty of dealings with over the past 18 or so months, uh, decided to join the enemy uh, during the off-season uh, after the previous A-League season. Now, uh, you were the man across the bulk of uh, the reporting and coverage of the Marco Kurz contract saga throughout the final stages of last season for the advertiser. Uh, you published an article in which you had interviewed Adelaide United Chairman Piet van der Poel, uh, detailing the reasons for why the club wanted to split from the German mentor. Uh, and at the time, it's fair to say that the decision divided many fans. Uh, we've seen a lot happen since all this went down as Kurtz prepares to return to Coopers for the first time since. Um, how much pressure do you think he's under to come away with the result? Yeah, look, I think if you would have asked me that question uh, maybe before the, the season started, um, before a ball had been kicked, I would have said Kurtz is probably under uh, you know, a fair degree of pressure. I guess you always are when you're coming back to your old employer, plus throwing the, the huge rivalry between the clubs that you mentioned. So I think it was always looming as a, a bit of a pressure occasion for him. Um, fast forward to now, though, um, and victory sort of sitting with our on the table, a, a pretty sort of slow start. They've also been hit by a fair few injuries, but certainly, you know, in terms of the expectations of their supporters and, and, and the club itself, um, a pretty disappointing start by their standards. Um, Adelaide United, on the other hand, obviously lost those first couple of games, but since you know winning the FFA Cup, have been on a on a great run um, and sort of heading heading upwards the way things are looking. So, I think really all those things probably add a bit more pressure to, to Kurtz coming back, and you know from a supporter point of view, probably add even more spice to an already pretty uh, pretty tasty sort of uh, fixture. So. Um, Look, I think certainly there is that pressure and expectation that's going to be on him. Having said that, you know, having dealt with him quite a lot over the couple of years he was there, it's here, sorry, in Adelaide, I don't think he's the type of character that is going to be too concerned about that or get too caught up in the sure. emotion of being back at his old club or, you know, whether people like him there or don't. You know, he's... Um, he's yeah. hard nosed isn't he? Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. You know, he, he's like a lot of European coaches. For, uh, Gertrude van Beek is, is quite similar yeah. in, that, in that sense. Um, you know, those guys have, have been through a lot. They've, they've seen a lot. They've probably copped a lot worse from supporters in, in Europe than anything they're going to, going to cop here in Australia. So, look, I, I think it, it probably has added a, a degree of pressure onto him, but I don't think it's going to affect him too much. I think he'll see it as another day at the office, to be honest, and he'll, he'll get on with it and, um, you know, obviously look to get the result that he wants to, to get the season heading in the right direction for them. Say we smack them 3-0 or, or get done three or four nil. Um, do you still expect to get a bit of a thumbs up from him um, in the press conference or? Yeah, I, I hope so, I hope so. Yeah, look, again, it's sort of hard to know with, with the, the European coaches. I think with the Australian coaches, you know, you can, uh, you can be a little bit more certain about having a, a laugh and a joke with them, totally. but the, you know, the European guys are, 
are very businesslike and they know they're here to you know they're being paid well to, to do a job mm-hmm. um but yeah look certainly my my uh, relationship with with Kurtz while he's here was was nothing but but positive um i found him yeah really good to deal with um quite insightful even going out to some of the training sessions and seeing some of the things he was doing with the team back then for me as a as a reporter, it was actually quite interesting to watch how you went about things. Um, and Verbeek, I'd put in that category as well, you know, very professional, very sort of uh, straight down the line, I guess. Um, but again, you know, these guys know what they're doing. And um, yeah, as a, as a reporter, even as a fan, I think to sort of sit back and watch what they do is a, is a really cool sort of learning experience. What do you make of uh, Melbourne Victory's current injury crisis, as this wasn't an uncommon occurrence for Kurz during his time with the Reds? Yeah, it's certainly an interesting one, that isn't it? I mean, they they have been hit fairly hard by uh, by injuries. Um, one way to look at it, the other way, I guess they've probably invested a lot more in their squad um, yeah. than uh, the likes of Adelaide United and probably a fair chunk of other clubs. So you would think, in one way, okay, that they've got some injuries, um, but you would think and hope that they would have recruited and and would have enough depth to probably cover those those guys that are out. Um, so yeah, they, they certainly, it's looking like they're probably going to come here with a, a slightly weakened squad. Um, but, you know, again, getting back to Kurtz, I don't think he's the type of manager that would really use that as, a, as an excuse. He might point it out and say, you know, our playing stocks are, are slightly diminished, but um, I don't think he's the type of coach that will come here and be, oh, well, we're missing five or six players. That's just yeah. sort of... Um, park the bus and try and get away from the only draw. You know, I, th- I still think he'll be sending a team out to to win and, and to, to get a result. Yeah, um, I just I hear whispers sometimes that um, you know he, he likes to run his plays into the ground um, and he's sort of all about being that aggressive mentor and and really big on fitness. So. It's interesting to see that this trend has followed him out of Adelaide because uh, they are missing a lot of players and they did have to rush Cruz back. He looked fairly underdone. Mm. Um, we came on for about 20 minutes against the NFC. So, yeah, um, yeah they might be in a bit of trouble uh, with that all happening. Uh, now, uh, you've reported a great deal on the rise of emerging star Al Hassan Toure. He was absent on the weekend against Central Coast due to representing Australia at a youth level. Um, it meant star signing Christian Opseth was given a start and then the Norwegian delivered with a nicely taken goal and decent performance overall. Um, who should Gert Yander Bakes start for Adelaide on Saturday night in your opinion and how much of a headache could this potentially be for him uh, with one or the other sort of missing games and the, the other being in form and then the other coming back off the bench perhaps and scoring you know it could create a real headache for Gert Yang going forward. Absolutely, I, you know, I think it's the old cliche, but it's probably a, a pretty welcome headache to have. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, you look at the past few seasons at Adelaide United, it's probably been the biggest thing they've missed is uh, an out that number nine who's uh, who's in form and scoring goals. Um, so I think to have two of them in goal scoring form is is, is probably a say a pretty welcome problem to have. Who he ends up going with, it's a, it's a tough call, isn't it? You know, again, before the weekend, you would, before Ops has got on the, on the score sheet, you probably would have said, oh, Toro comes straight back and goes straight in. He's already scored with the, the under-23 national team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having said that, a striker comes in and he scores a goal. He did miss a second-half penalty, but I, I think you know he, he looked pretty good. And, he did, yeah. Um, was linking up with the with the, the wide guys and Haller and the Maluznich really well as well. Um, so, yeah, looking back at that Mariners game, he'd probably be... It'd be hard pushed in some ways, wouldn't it, to, to kind of change too much from an attacking sense because I thought they looked really good, particularly in that, I think it was a 19-minute spell, they scored those those three goals yeah. and, and some of the moves, you know, some of the, the, the best football we've probably seen from an Adelaide United side in a, in a while. Um, so, look, if I was betting, I would probably say he might lean towards starting opposite, okay. um, just as maybe as a more experienced um, guy up there. Yeah. Um, having said that, look, it wouldn't surprise me if we went for Toure, and a, a start for Toure in this game would be certainly be well-deserved, because mm-hmm. he's been an absolute revelation since he's come in, and yeah, it looks like he's, I say, he's still scoring goals with the, the other 23 national team. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised, I'd say, if, if it was pre opposite starting and, and Tori maybe coming on as that, that impact guy off the bench. Yeah, it's quite fascinating because he can't sort of, or well, he seems unable to be able to shoot all of them both in because uh, we saw him try experiment by doing that against Newcastle Jets and it really just didn't work out. So, uh, yeah, he's got a bit of a uh, possible 
uh, issue to contend with there if, if both are outscoring one another. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in some ways on paper, you think, oh, it'd be great to get them both in the team. But then the two guys I mentioned before, Maluzmich and, and Halloran, um, you know, the damage they can they can create is shown on the weekend coming from those wide positions with a, you know, a sort of a number nine, a target in there, I think is... Uh, is it, pretty exciting for Adelaide United supporters. So I'd be surprised if he changed that that system too much just to accommodate both Toure and Opseth in there. Um, but again, you know, these European coaches, they've usually got a trick up their sleeve and they like to kind of keep people guessing. So I guess you, you never know. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, now, Michael Jak- Jakobsen was substituted uh, and looked to be in a great deal of dis- discomfort last weekend. And Jordan Elsey has only just been uh, eased back into the side. Could we be in any trouble defensively come the weekend, Rob? Look, from, from what I've heard uh, with Jakobsen, I think this is a, it's an ongoing uh, back issue he has. Um, I think it has plagued him before. I think even when he was at Melbourne City, mm-hmm. off and on previously, he had some issues with it. Um, my understanding of it is um, it's a condition without too much warning. It, he can have spasms with it. Um, I think even a few times he's travelled to away games and even on the flight to the away game, oh, wow. it, it's okay. actually seized up on him yeah. and, and caused him some problems. So certainly look, when he came off on the weekend, I think he was lying in, in front of the bench on the grass yeah, it wasn't didn't, a didn't look in great yeah. shape but um, it's part of a bit of a follow up story on Sunday I actually spoke to Ben Halloran uh, who was at still at the team hotel on Sunday morning and look he seemed to think at that stage um, Jakobsen was up and about he wasn't feeling too many ill effects um, you know obviously hard to say even at this stage we're still you know days out from the game um, but certainly the initial uh, signs and, and what I heard out of the club was that they would think and hope Jakobsen would be okay um, yeah, I guess it depends how he pulled up again after the flight home and, and recovery sessions early in the week. Um, but it didn't seem to be that it was a, a major concern, more an ongoing problem that he's had to manage previously and probably knows, and the medical staff probably know how to manage it as well to get him up for the weekend. So fingers crossed is looking like, I, I would think at this stage um, that he'll be lining up against the victory. No worries. Well, we like the sound of that. Uh, United's James Tracy has been a revelation in midfield since joining the club after ending his spell at Melbourne Victory, um, who in stark contrast are being baited by their own fans uh, for recruiting uh, who they uh, labelled as slow and un- unimaginative midfielders. Um, do you think Kurz will look to stifle our midfield ahead of play? Um, or do you feel like uh, he'll sort of set out and, and tr- really try and set this Melbourne Victory team up to, to play attacking football and come away with a good result? Yeah, it's, it, it's hard to know. It's going to be interesting, that midfield battle. I think, again, you know, the, the sort of looking at the, the Mariners game on the weekend, I think, you know, that, that attacking three got a lot of the the headlines and probably rightly so for some of the, the good stuff they did and Michael Maria out wide from left back and was you know played almost more yeah. as a left wing and was really impressive as well. But you know I was actually really impressed by the, the three in midfield. Um, I think the balance um, you know provided by Troisi um, and a little bit more of a, a central sort of holding role, uh, giving McGree that freedom to, to push on. Um, and the other young player, you know, I've, I've really been highly impressed by this season has been a, a Louis Dorigo. Yeah. I think he's slotted in. Um, he's, you know, I hate to say he's replaced his IES because, uh, you know, that's just yeah, a maybe stretch too far. For sure, for sure. But, you know, in that similar sort of role, yeah. playing that really disciplined midfield anchor role. Which he's for, still very young. Too. Absolutely. He's, yeah. I think he's 18. So, you know, for a teenager to come in and, and impress so so much in a, a really challenging role and show much, so show so much maturity has been really impressive so I think that midfield battle is, is going to be interesting um, I would say I think Adelaide United will go with that, that same three yep. um, I can't see that that changing too much how Kirk sort of looks to counteract that um, I guess kind of remains remains to be seen um, I, I do think he'll come here as I said before looking to, stick to get a win I, I don't think he'll come here and kind of shut up shop and and say that let's play really conservatively conservatively for 90 minutes and and come away with a point I, I don't think that's going to be his his approach um, but yeah certainly how he sort of puts things together in that en- engine room uh, will be interesting and it probably depends a bit again on some of those guys that have been out injured how fit they are whether they're sort of 100% fitting put them in or whether they're 80% and they come off the bench like you mentioned Cruz did on the weekend um, so a lot probably depends on, on fitness for them but um, yeah that, that that battle in the engine room will be interesting um, but I think those, that, that three of Adelaide United they line up the same way is a it's a really dynamic and uh, sort of mobile midfield triangle that I think can, uh, can, can do the job 
Totally. Um, just on the fact that uh, you're going on about how good Louis de Rigo is, um, it begs the question what's going on with Boland. Do you have any inside scoop for us? Uh, any goss going on there? Because it seems to be a bit shrouded in mystery at times. Uh, he had a fairly big uh, layoff with injury last season, mm -hmm. and then he came back into the side because uh, rushed him back. I think it was against Brisbane in the four three that he came back. Yep, that's right. Um, and uh, we really uh, sort of went on a decent run after he came back into the team. Um, do you know what's going on there at all? It's been, it's been a really disappointing and a frustrating one. Like I'm sure, obviously for, for him it has, and mm -hmm. I think for supporters because when he's been fit and when he's played, I think he's looked really good. And you're right, you know, when he came back into the team last season, it's when they had that really good run towards the end of the season, which sort of continued through the finals. And you know, they're obviously a, a penalty kick away from from securing a Correct. grand final berth. So I think he's got a lot of quality. I've I've met him a few times. He's a, a really great guy. He's here for the right reasons. He he's motivated. He's I've seen him out. Of, Playford, um, you know, sort of training the house down, doing his rehab, doing extra. Actually, I'm thinking back now, I think um, on Christmas Day, last Christmas, when United was playing on Boxing Day, uh, they were training at, at, at High Marsh uh, the, the day before, as they normally do. Yeah. Um, and I was there sort of covering the training session, doing a presser afterwards. And I think about half an hour before the team came out to train, Bolton was out there jogging laps, trying to get fit, wow. trying to prove himself. So. You know, I guess some foreigners come to the league and people maybe question, especially during the, the veteran stage of their career, uh, question their, their focus and their drive. But look, certainly I wouldn't accuse him of that at all. He's been uh, nothing but professional from what I've seen. Yeah, look, again, in terms of his actual injuries, it seems to have been a hamstring um, problem, which again, I think plagued him for quite a bit of, of last season. Yeah. Um, I also heard that as of last week, I think he's picked up a knee problem as well. Okay. Um, so not, not a great sign, uh, given when you're on the sort of the comeback trail to sort of aggravate another injury and pick that up. So don't have a, a firm sort of word on, on how long that's sort of going to keep him sidelined for. Um, but yeah, look, I think he's been a, a big loss. Um, and you know, fingers crossed he can kind of get over the hamstring, get over the, the knee problem and, and get, get back in the side because um, you know, he's an experienced operator. And you know, while you know, the likes of Dorigo and Toure, these young guys have done exceptionally well, mm -hmm. given they are so young, they're probably going to have peaks and, and troughs throughout the season. Yeah, it's um, so having another experienced head like um, a Boland in there, I think could be pretty crucial. So um, yeah, fingers crossed he, he can sort of get over it and, and get back for at least you know, the large part of that sort of second half of the season leading into hopefully another finals campaign. Yeah, no, really well said. And I think, um, you know, since uh, we sort of ended our ties with Marco Kurz, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, young players step up to the plate and be given the opportunity to shine, which they've taken. Um, since you've been covering uh, Adelaide United this season, uh, since Gurian has arrived, um, how different are things on the inside from, from what you've been privy to? Um, we get the sense he's very much a tough operator. Um, Pierre Van der Poel uh, was one of the first things he said at the fan forum uh, back a few months ago. Um, yeah, tell us sort of if things are significantly different to how they were last season. Um, anything else you might have heard on the grapevine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I think that there certainly has been changes. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the owners, for whatever reason, didn't see fit to extend uh, Marco Kurtz's contract, um, which, you know, I think you referred to it earlier. I think they put, you know, didn't sit so well with a lot of supporters at the time. Um, but, you know, they've brought in Verbeek, who has, has done a good job. I think, you know, in some ways it's interesting comparing Kurtz and Verbeek, because in some ways there's the similarities between yeah, there is the two. Similar, yeah. You know, uh, very sort of hard taskmasters, you know, very disciplined, very demanding of their players, and always seeking perfection. You know, I think a good example, Michael Maria, we spoke about before, Tomosa was watching the game on the weekend, was having a blinder, but by all accounts, um, uh, Verbeek was in his ear the whole time because he wasn't tracking back and doing another yeah. defensive job. So, um, and you know, Kurtz was like that as well. He he demanded and, and asked a lot of his players, and 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 often got got good results out of them as well. So, in some ways they they have similarities. I think their style of play is 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 different. They're yeah. probably philosophy and football. Um, yeah, Verbeek's really trying to push against this more Dutch uh, total football, I suppose, approach of lots of possession and yeah, sort of. Um, a really fast um, attacking yeah. free-flying style of football which they probably haven't put it together for a full 90 minutes yet but yeah. you know in, in spells the second half of the FFA Cup final was a good example of it and um, that, that 19 or 20 minute spell against the Mariners in the weekend was another 
example of it. So I, I think Kurtz and Verbeek, their playing styles are different. Um, probably the, the, the biggest change I can see, and it's a pretty obvious one, is uh, I guess the directive, and it comes from the top, it comes from Pete van der Poel, uh, where they want that United first team to be very much a, a homegrown team, so full of lots of South Australian players, and also full of lots of young players. Ideally, young South Australian players, who, sure. who most of them are, who have come through the ranks here, have come through the, the Reds youth team, um, and, and we've certainly seen that. You know, there was some young players under Kurtz that, that, that got a chance, um, but I think certainly that the focus is very much more, not just giving these young guys five minutes here or there, or a half a game, and then and dropping them back to the youth team. It's guys like Dorigo and Toure, they've come in, they've done a job, and they've kept their spot. Mm. While more experienced players are, are sort of being left on the on the bench until these guys, you know, do something to warrant being dropped, I guess. So that's certainly been the, the biggest change. Um, also, I think, you know, bringing guys like Bruce Jitte back, um, Eugene Galakovic, um, Carl Viet, um, that's another massive focus of the, the owners, I think, to bring these, you know, guys that are club legends, basically, back to the club um, and you know it's not the sole reason they're bringing them back they're well credential for those roles and I think already they've been all three have been have been excellent in those roles you know particularly Bruce has you know a bit of a, a face of the club um, yep. representing them and also in terms of his recruiting I think that he's sort of overseen has been, has been pretty shrewd so far mm -hmm. um, but I think having those guys back you know supporters love seeing them back there these guys have the club's best interests at heart um, so I think that's definitely been another sort of key approach of the of the, the owners, um, and something that so far seems to be working out pretty well. Yeah, the PR seems to have strengthened a lot with Bruce coming back, and um, I think the the owners have stuck to their word. Um, you know, we're seeing young players come through, and and the South Australian identity be restored within the club, which Absolutely. is probably the main thing that they were pushing. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, good to hear. That all being validated from uh, what you see from within the inside. Um, now, I want to get your prediction, Rob. So for the for Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Always, uh, always fraught with danger, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I, I think um, I, th I think Adelaide United can can get it done. You yeah. know, it, it, as we all know, this game always. You know, it's the old sort of form book goes out the window in a derby, and it, and it can do to a degree because I think Adelaide United have some had some instances over the years where they've probably been more of a mid-table side, and victory have been flying high, and Adelaide have even gone over over there and have knocked them off a couple yeah, of times definitely. against the odds. So you know, I wouldn't count against the fact that you know the victory are struggling a little bit. They could still come here, and uh, you know, I'm sure they'll put in a strong performance and and, and hope they can sneak a result. But you know, I think Adelaide United have shown the quality they've got, uh, particularly from an attacking sense. Um, I think they're going to cause victory. Problems. I think they're going to, going to score goals. Um, yeah. and I, I think they'll get the get the job done. Um, who do you see getting on the score sheet? Um, it probably depends a little bit who he starts and that number nine role maybe. But um, yeah, I, I think um, you know I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you see the the wingers get in on the act again. I yeah. think you know Ben Howland probably had one of his better games since joining Adelaide United on the weekend, and uh, definitely. You know, Nick and Malusin this season, I think, is just looks full of confidence. You know, he scored that, that that free kick early in the season. He's bobbed up with a couple of other goals. He played really well in in the cup. So um, got that great assist in the cup as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So those wide guys are really are really pivotal. Um, and the other one we haven't actually mentioned is uh, is Riley McGree, who we tend to sort of gloss over a bit when we talk about young players. Yeah. Um, you know, because he's so experienced, it feels like he's been yeah. around forever. But he's been been so impressive. You know, um, and it just has just shown uh, what I guess everyone thought he had in his locker. He's just taking it to the, to the next level. So um, I'm going to go for McGree to get a goal and um, and Hallow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, before we wrap, uh, you cover a host of other sports. So tell us what else is on your plate in the advertiser building uh, and how fans can access your non-football content, Adelaide United fans that is, uh, who don't know that you cover other sports as well? Yeah, for sure. So pr probably this time of year, um, one of the other sports I've sort of been covering a fair bit has been baseball. So the um, Australian Baseball League actually kicks off this coming weekend. Um, so it was actually out at uh, West Beach at their home base earlier today and pulling together a bit of a season preview. Um, we've got a couple of, uh, quite a few uh, imports, uh, quite a few American guys. And, one of the guys um, I spoke to today um, actually has played a bit of Major League 
uh, oh, wow. in, in, in the States. Um, so yeah, I was talking to him and a few of the other guys about the season coming up. So um, they start their season with a home series, which kicks off on Friday night down at West Beach. Um, so yeah, so it'll be a, a sort of full season preview on that um, sort of coming out um, later in the week leading into that game. So that's probably the, the other sort of main thing other than the, the football stuff and the uh, LA United stuff heading into the weekend um, that I'll be kind of pulling together. Um, probably the, the best way to see my stuff uh, to find it on social media. Um, my Twitter handle is at Rob Greenwood one. Um, the other best way is probably yeah, via Facebook. Um, Rob Greenwood sports writer I'm trying to think now, I think is the, uh, is, is yeah, the, 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 the Facebook uh, handle. So, uh, again, I sort of post links to all my stories, um, online links to, to them. So yeah, check out both of those, um, and give them a follow if you, you, you sort of, uh, you feel like it. And that's a good way to keep up to date with all yeah, my football stories and other sports as well. And, and obviously the, uh, the other way is picking up a, a copy of the, the advertiser, the, the paper itself. Um, yeah, Again, all that that football stuff and uh, sort of news and, and, and previews heading into the weekend will be in the, the print edition as well. Yeah, no, definitely get around Rob Greenwood. There's content flying out from what I've seen in the last few weeks. Uh, so you're a busy guy. Um, great to have you in here, given you have your ear to the ground closer than anyone else these days when it comes to all things going on at Cooper Stadium and Playford. Rob Greenwood, it's been great getting you in the studio. Uh, we'll see you Saturday night. I'm sure you'll be around. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be there uh, covering the game. So, uh, yeah, certainly uh, looking forward to it. Going to be a, a huge, feisty game. Great to get you in, Rob. Uh, we'll, we'll see you sometime soon. No worries. We'll all do. All the best. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you.